Venezuela. You see the death of the protesters, the arrest of the protesters, how uh, there's no freedom of speech now. So I've asked the president to look at sanctions uh, to stop this. Uh, we need to do this. We need to stand up for the Venezuelan population. The second issue is the Medicare population. We have a significant Medicare population in our state. You saw the cuts in Medicare last week. Uh, those are devastating to our state. It's devastating to our seniors. As I travel the state, seniors are telling me they cannot get a doctor now. Uh, they're telling me all the time, if I can't get a doctor, uh, the Medicare recipients are. Two issues that impact our state dramatically. The third is flood insurance. We've been asking the president to use his pen to stop these unreasonable, unfair increases. It doesn't make sense what he what he did. He pat, a bill was passed that he signed. It's impacting our state dramatically. We've been a four to one donor state. Over the life of that flood insurance, we paid it four times as much money as we've gotten back. How can our rates go up like this? It's had a dramatic impact on many of our families. They can't afford these rates, stopping their ability to sell their homes. The biggest area of our state where it's getting impacted is Pinellas County, the St. Petersburg area, where rates have gone up and now people can't sell their homes. Home prices have been, it's impacted home prices and home sales. So I'll be glad to take any questions anybody has. But there's three areas with the president. They're rating the Medicare trust. They're, med they're rating Medicare to pay for Obamacare. That's wrong. We should stop these unreasonable and fair increases in flood insurance. And we need he needs to consider sanctions for Venezuela. Governor, what well, governor's response well, on Medicare? Well, on Medicare, you know, he, he he talks about the fact that he thinks you know they'll have to rely on on Medicare eventually. The doctors will have to come back and start you you know use them because they'll accept it because we have such a big Medicare population. But I, I can tell you, as I travel the state and I talk to every time I'm around a large group of seniors, one of the first questions is, I can't get a doctor. And now with these these rate cuts last week, it's going to have a bigger impact. What did he tell you on flood insurance? And secondly, how come? And secondly, on, 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 flood, on flood insurance, he said that he thinks there's going to be a bill passed. But he can look. There's a lot of talk in Washington. There's not enough action. They've talked about this for months. They haven't passed anything. The president can do this on his own. What they should have done is gone and done the review rate review this the surveys first before they ever did these increases. It never should have happened. They never should have done these increases. Stop and think about it. We paid in about $16 billion since the life of flood insurance, and we've gotten back about $4 billion. How can flood insurance rates be going up in our state? So he gave you no indication that he plans to do anything right now to help Florida? No. He said he, there's no indication that he's going to do anything. He's reliant, waiting for the House to send it. But look, it's just exactly what I said. They talk. There's no action. It's, it's having a dramatic impact on a lot of families. It's, and look, if you go to Pinellas family, it's not a bunch of rich people on the beach. It's poor families struggling. You know, and they have to have the flood insurance for the mortgages. And Governor, have you given any uh, decision into who you will endorse in the open sea left by Representative Fredo? No, I haven't. Governor of Venezuela, did you have a chance to tell him specifically and what did he say the administration has not sure. said that they would do that at this moment? I brought up the, I brought up the fact that the protesters have been killed, they've been arrested, uh, they've, ex they've pushed the journalists out, there's no freedom of speech. Uh, I asked about you know, they, they should consider sanctions, and what he says, he thought there's enough pressure on, on the uh, on Maduro right now. Governor, what are you most proud of having accomplished during your first year? You know what? what I, look, I ran on jobs, uh, so I'm proud of the private sector. We cut taxes 24 times. We're going to cut taxes another $500 million. We have cut regulations, almost 3,000 regulations, and the private sector's come back. 462,000 jobs. I grew up. I grew up living in public housing. You've got to have a job to get out of poverty. I'm proud that people are getting jobs. So why do you believe you're true Australian according to polls against Charlie Chris in the race? Have okay. people not seen that? I'm, I'm going to continue to work on jobs until I work on every day. Governor, the issue of Medicaid expansion come up? Are you going to push that? It didn't come up in the questions I My focus right now is one, we have 3,000 Floridians that were told that they could keep their insurance. They lost the last call. They're told they're going to lose the last call. Now we're seeing that our Medicare recipients seeing these rate cuts to pay for Obamacare. Now and they and they can't get doctors, so it's having a dramatic impact on our Medicare population. And we have a big Medicare. I'm sorry, we have a big Medicare population. So, Governor, on one hand, you're Medicaid expansion. What is your response to the Medicaid expansion? Sure. I haven't changed my position at all. The biggest issues we have right now, though, the biggest issues we have is the families that were told that they would keep their insurance or lose it. The fact that now our Medicare population is worried about these cuts to pay for Obamacare, and they can't get the doctors they thought they were going to be able to keep. Governor, you talked about um, being frustrated with Congress. Are you satisfied with 